lot of times people in most of a lot of what we do never even think about safety. And so when they're thinking about fire, a lot of times people are just concerned about getting the fire implemented uh, and, and the procedures about fire and they never give a second thought to what they're wearing when they actually get out there and light a match. And it's extremely important. And some of the reasons I want to tell you why is just kind of starting, I like to kind of start from a foundation and that's really footwear. Um, boots like I've got on or boots like this are really good examples of, of uh, boots to footwear to wear during fire. Uh, this this uh, pair of boots I know has uh, been used in fire a lot and uh, they've probably had lots of burns under them but they're leather. They've got a good heavy sole on them and that's to protect you from the from the heat and or you know sometimes you never know when you might have to use your feet to extinguish small fires along the fire line or anything along those lines. And So if you've got heavy heavy uh, leather uh, boots for uh, for wearing and during a, a burn that's the that's the foundation of uh, of uh, of the clothing. So you know a lot of people also don't give thought. You know I mentioned this is leather footwear. You sure don't want to wear tennis shoes or anything that are made out of synthetic fibers. That's a big no-no because if that gets hot it melts and or burns. And I don't know which would be worse, whether you have some hot synthetic material melted to conform to your skin or whether it burns up and burns you. You know, or both of them would be bad, and so that's bad news. And the same goes with the rest of your clothing. You know, there's a lot of clothing available out there. Uh, uh, everything from uh, flame-resistant clothing that you can get at a lot of ag uh, product stores, and they're, they're, you know, kind of a denim uh, color, or you can get some of them. You know, this is an example of a, of a flame-resistant jacket that's in bright yellow. And I mentioned the colors. There's yellow and orange uh, that people can wear too during burning and that's a, that's a visibility factor. If, I'm, if some people are wearing what I'm wearing or they're wearing a brown shirt or something along those lines or a coat, sometimes hard to see them in, in the smoke and, and then when you're active in the fire. So these bright colors really help. But this is a flame resistant jacket and they're available commercially uh, re pretty readily at farm supply stores. You can get a two piece, you can get the pants and the shirt or you can like you said get the jumpsuit. Some, some, I really just view that as a personal preference. Um, but you know, there's been a lot of producers that have burned a lot of land in just their regular blue jeans, denim blue jeans, and leather boots, and cotton or wool shirt, and gloves, and, uh, and, and, and a cap or a hat, you know, and so it's something to pay attention to, but again, jeans and shirt and gloves and shoes, anything exposed on your body, you don't want to have synthetic fibers. It needs to be natural fibers like wool or, uh, or uh, cotton, and cotton's a, the, the, the most widely used. Cotton will still burn, but it'll just smolder for a little bit, and you can get it out. Uh, you can put it out if it if it does burn, but uh, and it you, it's not a as big of a threat to you. These flame resistant clothes um, they'll burn too, but uh, it takes a, a lot hotter fire to catch them on fire. But uh, but you you they're, they're they're plenty protective. And then there's the Nomex gear too that a lot of rural volunteer fire departments, uh, municipal fire departments. Forest Service, a lot of other government agencies are required to wear the Nomex clothing. And you can see this has even got a higher visibility on it too from a safety standpoint with some reflective taping. But uh, this is this is flame resistant as well. I mean, it's uh, it's it's pretty much flame proof, the Nomex clothing is. And so, uh, and you can see this has been used. And so you can purchase these too uh, to, to, uh, to wear, but you know, a lot of landowners I find, you know, whenever we have prescribed burn crews or, or the Forest Service or somebody like that that has requirements to wear these clothing, they have the misconception that they have to have this clothing to, to burn and that's not the case. They can wear just what I'm wearing today and I will be burning what I'm wearing today. And it doesn't stop at the, at the footwear, the jeans or the shirt, it goes on. Um, you know, the, the head, a lot of people don't think about the head. You know, I'm wearing this, this ball cap today and uh, that's probably not necessarily adequate clothing. I'll, I'll, a lot of times I'll wear a helmet such as this. Um, and this has got a, a, a set of goggles attached to it as well to help protect and keep smoke particles out of your eyes. But in addition to, to this, uh, sometimes what is good to wear is a, is a face shield. And you can buy those from, from specialized fire, depart, uh, fire supply stores too, but you can also go buy a cutting torch or a, well, uh, a cutting torch face shield that's clear or tinted, either one. And it just simply shields your, face, your entire face and keeps a lot of the heat because a lot of times when you're burning, you're getting up close to the heat, and especially on a, you know, a, a, a summer burn day, then uh, the heat's even more uh, sometimes a, uh, uh, an issue and so that face shield keeps the heat away from your face and just keeps you a lot more comfortable. And then these tight fitting goggles keep smoke particles and all out of your eyes and um, 
and helps you with you know after the next you know next day when you're through burning, uh, you don't have as much trouble with your eyes. So, and then uh, also sunglasses or a or a safety glasses, uh, tinted or untinted, either one. They they also help if you don't have the if you don't have the goggles to wear. Uh, some people prefer just the the safety glasses. Some people may not have much trouble with uh, smoke eating in their eyes or into the respiratory system, but. Uh, some people do have allergies uh, more severe, and so th those things kind of help. The other thing about eyewear with the sunglasses, uh, you know, a lot of people have to wear prescription glasses, and so one thing that they might think about is, is getting contacts. Contacts can serve uh, much the same purpose as, as uh, wearing uh, safety goggles, I mean, uh, safety glasses or goggles, in that they help keep a lot of the smoke particles out of your eyes, too. So, uh, so if, if uh, I would, I would not encourage someone to necessarily take their contacts out in favor of physical glasses on their on their nose. It would actually be probably more protective to leave their contacts in. Respirators are another thing that you can go into wearing too, but that gets into more highly specialized gear. But some people who have allergies need to consider respirators to wear while they're burning. And then, uh, you know, last but not least is a, is a good pair of gloves. Um, leather gloves, again, no synthetics. Uh, preferably not. Cotton gloves will work okay, but I would rather have leather. Uh, when you're messing with the drip torches and a lot of other equipment, you get a lot of diesel on your hands, and so if you're wearing cotton gloves, that'll soak into your gloves, and uh, leather is just a little bit safer. It's, they're, they're readily available and pretty, pretty economical, too. You mentioned that there was uh, another type of clothing, too, and, and there is. We go from the cotton to the flame-resistant clothing to the Nomex clothing to Endura cotton. And each one of those, you know, when you go, the Endura cotton is going to be the most expensive for landowners to look at purchasing but it also provides the most protection from heat to and flame. Um, all the way back down to the cotton. Cotton is obviously going to be the most inexpensive. So that's kind of your range there on the, on the clothing. So it's just a really a, a matter of safety consideration at what level uh, uh, producers are comfortable with and how much money they're willing to spend uh, for burning. But you know, the other thing we'll talk about is durability. Uh, if a person wants to buy either the flame resistant or the, or the, or the Nomex or the Endura cotton, any of those are going to last for a long time. Uh, they're they're really durable, and so if a, if a landowner is going to do a lot of burning, that's something that they might consider going ahead, going ahead and making an investment in because it it'll last. But cotton shirts will also last a pretty good while too. I would wash these things at least once a year, per, per, maybe twice a year, because if you don't, you can get a lot of uh, you know diesel oil and 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 that sort of thing kind of built up in some of these just by getting them on your gloves and then transferring it to your jacket, and in time that can increase maybe the flammability of some of these cloths.